to Mars Hill United Methodist Church. All means all here. All are welcome. We are very glad that you are worshiping with us at this time. Just a few announcements to let you know. If you're interested, the 4-H has got a sale for poinsettias, and you can find that on the website if you would like to support that great organization and have some Christmas cheer, then please do that. I also wanted to let you know that La Esperanza, which is a, a group that works to help our uh, Hispanic brothers and sisters, well, mostly sisters, in, um, in this community, they're having a um, enchilada to lunch to go on November the 13th, that's Friday, from 12 to 2 at the Marshall Presbyterian Church. And for $10, you get chicken or vegetarian enchiladas and refried beans and rice and flan and a drink. So if you uh, are able to come and support that worthy ministry, I invite you to uh, to go and support by, you know, not having to cook that day. So it's a win-win. Also know that uh, we have our regular fellowship times via Zoom for our Sunday school uh, time at at 9.45 on Sunday, and then our fellowship time for Zoom on Thursdays at 3. You're invited to be a part of those as you are able. We love to be able to see and connect in that way. So now I invite you to breathe in the Spirit of God and open yourself so that God might transform and renew you at this time. of our democracy and I, I mean all the processes let's honor the counting of, of all the votes let's honor all the legal challenges which are coming because that is also part of the processes of our nation and, and let's trust our democratic processes take a breath and know I mean maybe by the time you're watching this we already know but <laughs> take a breath and know that you know this is this is just gonna play out and whatever happens We'll be okay. We will be okay as a country, and we will keep moving forward and doing the things we need to do. And it's it's gonna be okay. It's been a tense week. I mean, maybe you haven't been tense. I felt it. I know it's been rough. So just 
take a breath and, and if, if you need to do something, pray for our country, pray for peace, pray that we can come together and recognize that despite political differences, we really we have more in common than we do that, that separates us. And we forget that. So take a breath before posting something on Facebook. Take a breath and offer encouragement and connection. Um, and we'll get through this. Um, but really pray for peace. There are some factions and groups that do not want to honor and that are ready to turn to violence. So a lot of prayers, but that doesn't happen. Uh, prayers for our FBI that has done a really good job to keep that from happening or our systems, but prayers for all of that. Um, then let us also remember to keep, uh, keep Connie. She's recovering from hand surgery. So uh, keep her in prayers. Um, Phyllis and uh, who's caring for Pierre, so, so pray for him and for her in that work. Uh, continue to keep Fran and Mike on the list. They are recovering, but it takes a while to recover from COVID, so just keep Fran warm. Uh, keep Chuck in prayers as well as Carol. Um, continue to hold up Lucy's family. They've had a lot of loss in a short period of time, so uh, please remember them. Um, Pay for all those who have COVID. It's sort of mind-boggling numbers that are coming up, and it's not just here, it's around the world. And healthcare workers that are challenged with making hard decisions. Um, folks in Europe, folks in India, where there isn't quite as much of a system to support, so, or nearly as much of a system to support. So prayers, prayers for all of those who are sick, all around the world, um, prayers that this is able to be cur curtailed and that we can remember to do the right things to keep ourselves safe and reduce the spread of this. Prayers for um, teachers and students as they continue in this challenging time that folks um, stay safe. And, and we, oh, we still have on our list Cheyenne and Luke, so continue to remember to pray for them. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the beauty of the world around us. We give you thanks for those whom we love, our family and our friends, even when we can't agree on things and relationships feel strained right now. Lord, help us remember how much our love is there, that we might connect again. Lord, we, we hold up our country and we hold it up in, in, in thankfulness for, for the processes we have, as flawed as they are, um, we, we thank you. We thank you for the freedom that we have in this country. We thank you for this freedom to worship. We thank you for those systems that keep us safe. And Lord, we ask your blessing on our country. We ask your blessing on this process of the election and help us be patient. Help us see love uh, for those that we disagree with and let your peace blanket this, this country so that, um, so that violence does not erupt or is minimal. Just keep your grace on us. Please bless all those who have COVID in this country and around the world and for those healthcare workers that are, are working so tirelessly to help them, especially some, some countries have some significant issues, but, but for our country as well. Keep your, your care and safety around them and keep your presence and peace being for those who are who are sick, especially those who are having to be isolated from others and are alone in their illness. Keep, uh, keep your care around them. Keep the students and teachers 
in care and in safety and an ability to learn through this tense time in our country. And we hold up especially for your care this day, Connie, Pierre, Phyllis, Fran, Mike, Chuck, and Carol, Lucy's family, Cheyenne, and Luke. For all those who are hurting and struggling and who are feeling unsettled this day, let your peace surround us all. We ask all this in your son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
in our uh, reading from the lectionary, if we continue on in the book of Matthew, and we are to the 25th chapter now. I have to acknowledge I like the way the 25th chapter ends better than I like the way it beginnings, but begins, but we are at the beginning to read through and wrestle with and find what we are offered in this passage. Hear now the word. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten young bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Now five of them were wise, and the other five were foolish. The foolish ones took their lamps, but didn't bring oil for them. But the wise ones took their lamps and also brought containers of oil. When the groom was late in coming, they all became drowsy and went to sleep. But at midnight there was a cry, Look, the groom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. But the foolish bridesmaids said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps have gone out. But the wise bridesmaids replied, No, because if we share with you, there won't be enough for our lamps and yours. We have a better idea. You go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the groom came. Those who were ready went in with him into the wedding. Then the door was closed shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep alert, because you don't know the day or the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. To be honest, I don't like this parable. I'm not really sure what the message is here to read it through and you go, so if you're wise, you're selfish and you don't share with other people and you shut them out and if you're, if you're too late, forget about it. You're shut out. It doesn't seem like the greatest message. Now, it's possibly this one really gets me a little bit worse because I recognize my weakness of being a terrible procrastinator. And for all those folks that would be hearing that have been frustrated by my procrastination in the past that has affected you poorly, I do apologize. I know that it's something I have to work on, but it, it just really hits me that these folks that weren't all prepared, suffer so. I mean, maybe those of you who are like the Boy Scouts and just those who are just naturally ones that prepare more easily don't understand these folks that could procrastinate and, and not be ready and, and not be prepared, and it's just too bad for them. Now, this parable doesn't make me particularly comfortable But I have to accept that Jesus did not write his parables to make me or anyone comfortable. In fact, I feel quite sure that they were written in order to shake us up some, to keep us learning and thinking, to keep us moving forward in our faith. So I have to trust that there is something to help us move forward in our faith. So, this isn't about being selfish. What is it about? It's talking about this time to come, which might be my other challenge with this. I honestly don't like to spend very much time thinking about this second coming of, of Christ. I, I know that it's in the scriptures and it's in our tradition. 
I guess maybe it just doesn't affect my life a whole lot. I know, perusing some of Facebook this week, that there are a lot of folks that are looking at this time right now and thinking that these are signs that the end is coming. While I grant we do have a good amount of pestilence going on in the world right now, and the skies did turn orange in California, if they not still are, yeah, there's been some crazy things this year. So, I don't know. Maybe it means we're nearing the end. But, when I rationally look at this time period we're in, of this era change, every time that's happened through Christian history, people have been quite sure that this was the end time. So I feel like we've been through this before. It's happened quite a bit. In fact, there's always been a lot of folks looking at this time and saying, these are the end times. That there were a bunch of people around 500 who went out into the desert to wait for it to happen. And it didn't happen. And, and just again and again in Christian history, there were those situations where people saw. But I also know that I don't know. That's the one thing I, I can be sure of in the scriptures that we're told we don't know when the time is. I mean, there is one place that says it would happen in this lifetime, but obviously since that lifetime ended uh, of those people then that, that heard it, that it wasn't then, we misunderstood that message. So other than that, I don't know. And I guess I, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about it because it doesn't seem very important to the way I live my life right now. But I am trusting that this parable telling us about this kingdom kind that is to come is important for us right now because I know that when Jesus taught, he taught us about things that were important for the here and now. So, what does this tell us? We have all these bridesmaids waiting for the groom and they have to have these lamps that are burning. Actually, I, I, I haven't found any evidence that this was the tradition of bridesmaids and grooms in that time. It seems to be something that Jesus sort of created for us to have an analogy to understand something about life rather than this was an actual practice. But you have these ten bridesmaids, and half were foolish, and half were wise. And the foolish ones did not prepare for how long the wait was. Now maybe if we look at this passage, we could have some sympathy for these bridesmaids, even if you're not, even if you are a person that prepares, because our whole country was told to prepare that this election could be a very long one, but yet I think that as a whole, we have shown that people are pretty low on patience and dealing with it, even though we were told to be prepared for it. I don't like this passage, but I do find it wonderfully amusingly ironic that it comes up this week of telling about being ready to wait longer than expected. So these foolish bridesmaids, well, all the bridesmaids, it was too long. They fell asleep. They couldn't stay awake this whole time. It was like midnight when the groom gets there. So they've fallen asleep, but the wise ones were ready. They could trim the lamps, add more oil, and be ready to go. And the foolish ones didn't have enough to fill their, their lamps, fill their tanks. So they had to run at the last minute and try to buy some more. They couldn't get back in time. And the groom tells them, I don't know you. Now, it's interesting to note that there are other times, there's another time where Jesus said to folks, I don't know you. It was the short little passage where it said, folks who call on Jesus' name but haven't been doing anything with it, haven't been doing the works, will cry out, Jesus, Jesus, and he'll say, I don't know you. I don't know you. You haven't been, you haven't been at work with the things in my name. You just want to cry out my name. And that doesn't allow me to know you. If it's simply calling out 
for help at a time, the not connecting before. So I think that kind of gives us a little bit of a clue. And another clue with this is the fact that all, there's Old Testament passages that associate all as works, as things that people would do. So if you look at it that way, these wise bridesmaids that have plenty of all are the ones who have been at work doing the things of the kingdom. Forgiving, loving, caring for, and feeding those who are hungry, visiting those in prison, taking care of people, doing the things that the gospel message has told us to do, and they keep their lamps full, praying, connecting, keeping ourselves going in the work for the gospel. Maybe you know what it feels like to run a little empty on all. I, I do. I know that there are times in my walk where I've done more to talk about what to do than actually doing it. And when that is the case, I feel like I'm running a little empty. Which I think I have been feeling like a lot lately. Being more separated from people. Not able to go out and do the things of, of action and care. Feeling it more important to be isolated now, I do know that it's important for us to remain isolated, to stay safe, but I feel I can tell the difference of not feeling as filled up. This passage is about waiting for Christ to come back. I, I can't accept that, but it is telling us what to do with our waiting. We need to be alert, and that doesn't mean always be asleep, always be awake. They were both, they both fell asleep, but to keep our lamps full. We're doing the things we need to do. Now that is something I can get behind with this message, because it doesn't matter if Christ is coming back tomorrow or coming back in a thousand years. We know what we need to do. It's too late to run at the last minute and try to buy ourselves into enough of these good acts. Our, our, what we're called to do is to continue to be in the world, feeding, caring, loving, supplying, bringing peace and grace. We are being called to be people who are bringing God's love into the world. And I know that our actions are somewhat limited right now, or very limited right now, but in what ways can you bring more of God's love in the world? In what ways can we increase those actions? In what ways can you reach out and show love? In what way can you reach across to someone who you disagree with and show connection? In what way can we come together as a country in this very divided place that we are and find a way to love one another? Because it's more important what God is wanting to do in the world than it is for us to be right. I think this passage is also telling us that time is important. There are ways for us to run out of time. And being the queen of procrastinator that I am, that's hard to hear, but there are things that we run out of time on. There are ways that we can miss opportunities. People pass away, children grow up, the deadlines come and go. 
the time we are given is precious. Let us use it in ways that fill our basins with all that we might be burning bright, no matter the circumstances around us. Thanks be to God for this message that is uncomfortable, but can help us grow. Let us pray. Gracious God, we hold up to you all those ways that we have fallen short of this important calling these ways that we have wasted our time, these ways that we have been more focused on what we need than what you are calling us to. Where we have only looked above for you instead of looking around us for you. For the ways and the times that we have let our all burn low. Lord, we lift in silence to you all those things that have fallen short of your great calling, whether they are uh, things done or things left undone. We lift them to you that you might surround us with your grace and fill us with your love. Breathe in, and as you breathe, feel the Spirit of God coming into your body like the air you breathe. Let it be in and through you. And any places of worry or stress or guilt or pain, let that air be God's grace coming into the tight spots and bringing space, coming into the empty places and filling you with grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the name of the one who has every ability to do all and be all, who has earned our respect and grace, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made new. Thanks be to God.
the light of Christ burn within you, like a lamp, a lamp to warm your days and light your way, a lamp fed by the grace of God and by the grace that we give in the world. Go knowing that you are supported, surrounded by the grace of God. Go knowing that you need to offer that grace and peace to a world in such desperate need for it. Go in peace and power. Amen.